Hello guys, welcome back to the video. Today I am finally back home after a three week vacation in Alaska. And man, it is good to be home. It's a beautiful day outside today and I got lots of work to do on the Torino. Oh yeah. Look, I just parked it here yesterday. This is the only puddle that left. So as far as working on the Torino today, I got several carburetor parts that I ordered for it over the weekend. We'll show you guys that as we get into it, but set number one would be to pop the carburetor off. I also had ordered a power steering hose for it, the high pressure line, but it did not come in yet. So I'm still trying to figure that out. And I'm gonna try and get the carb shooter screen mounted up in my fourth gauge pod in there. That way I can actually read it all right without it falling down all the time. So we got that. I also got some other parts for that out there. So all right, so here's what we got here on our tailgate rebuild of our carburetor. It's not really a rebuild, but just to add a couple uh, components to it essentially. So first we have a power valve block off plate for the secondaries. Um, I was just gonna JB weld an old power valve together, but this is only six bucks or something like that from Holly, and it's an actual, you know, just a core basically that hasn't been drilled for it. So that's gonna be better than JB welding anything. I don't have to worry about it either. You know, it still seals with a regular gasket. So we're gonna be installing that in secondaries, and hopefully that'll take up. Hopefully that'll fix our rich mixture at wide open throttle. It'll go like to tin. Um, it just kind of chugs, you know, once it's that rich. So it doesn't really make good power there. So we're going to put that in secondaries. Then I got this to replace. Um, I, didn't, I didn't realize that those came with uh, new gaskets like that. That's okay because I need those. The power valve that I put on the two barrel and the yellow truck over there, um, it was already split. The gasket is split. And I thought, well, I'll just use half of it because you know, it's still a gasket, right? Well, I don't think that worked um, because if you mess with the idle mixture screws or anything in that carburetor, it's a holly. Um, it does not do anything. And I'm pretty sure that's because the power valve was leaking in that carburetor. So we'll have to fix that with a new uh, power valve gasket. And then, so if about 40 miles an hour to 50 is where it really likes to be as far as AFR. It's like a perfect 14.7-ish around there. And, you know, it's a good AFR up to that speed. But if you go faster than 55 or if you get to 60, 70 miles an hour, it starts to go rich, like ever richer as you get going. And I kind of feel like that might be because this power valve might be opening just a little too early. So I have a 4.5 um, power valve for the primary side. So we'll give that a shot. Hopefully that fixes that problem. Hopefully it has a better cruising AFR. That's what we're gonna be doing. So let's go ahead and, oh, and then I got, I also bought uh, these nylon, reusable nylon bowl screw seals for the bowl screws. So we'll give those a shot. I hope those work good, because if they do, that'd be awesome to be reusable and won't have to worry about these things falling apart on me. So if any of you are curious what classic holly gold looks like, I think that's a pretty good example. Underneath that, uh, above that was a sticker that's been on there forever. I went ahead and peeled it off. It's been trying to peel itself off for a long time now. I've just been kind of trying to stick it back on, you know. It, I mean, it wasn't really much left of it. It's just chrome, but you know, some kind of date code thing, probably. Some kind of manufacturing stamp. You can see this is where somebody before me Beat, beat it to heck to try and get the needle and seat to work, I assume, which is kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. It just tells a story, right? One of the questions that comes up when you're working on a Holly carburetor is how high do you set your floats? And that is a question that usually involves you having to get it running and then taking that screw out there to see the fuel level. But I found that if you just want somewhere to start with, if you get your float level set to about like right there where it's just level, the top of the float is level with the top of the top of the carburetor there. That's a pretty darn good place to start. You can kind of see here, so yes, on this side, side I guess, where the fuel usually sits, you know, maybe to the bottom of this where the finish is rubbed off. And it's about to the bottom of that plug. So, you know, somewhere around there to start with. And if you want to take the slight plugs out, you know, to check it after it's running, then you can do that. But I've never actually done that before. I just sat this and that seemed to work just fine. So we're gonna need a one inch wrench to take that power valve off. All right, got the power valve block off plate installed. Now when you tighten these things down, you don't wanna crank them down to, you know, 37,000 foot pounds. Just get it seated and snug. You know, you don't gotta, you don't wanna pull the threads out of the bronze there, or bronze out of the casting, that would be really bad. So 
And I'm gonna go take this primary bowl off and we'll get that power valve swapped out as well. Here's a great example of what I was talking about. And any of you guys who've messed with these before would know, know this, but the, the gasket here splits whenever you take it apart. So there's half of it there, half of it there. And it's not because there's two gaskets there. It's because they get delaminated. So it should be, you know, one and it just is two now. And if you try to only use one, it's not gonna work. So you have to use a new one when you install power valves, seems like every time, which is kind of sad. That's why I bought a pack of 10 because you, know, you never have too many of them. They're, they're pretty affordable and I would highly recommend doing that. You really don't want to have your power valves leaking on you. So it's just a good thing to be safe and just know that your power valve is sealed and working when it's supposed to. <clears throat> when I'm putting my bowls and metering blocks back on, I typically try to have the carburetor upside down or as close to upside down as you can. And because if you try to do it when it's right side up, you have to fight keeping these down, you know, the uh, accelerator pump arms. But if you do upside down, they're right with gravity helps you out and keeps them from getting in your way. So uh, I'll just go ahead and put the metering blocks and bowls back on. I mentioned this earlier, but I'm going to be using these new uh, nylon bowl screw uh, seals. See if they work any different than... My hope is they're more reusable than the, these papery kind. I'm gonna keep them around, obviously, the old old style ones, but um, they're getting pretty worn out. I've taken these bowls off so many times, and some of them are really getting to be um, hard to fall apart. So, hoping these will work better than the paper ones. So, we'll try it out. Got the carb, I'll put it back together. I'm gonna get it finished, get everything installed on it, and then we'll see uh, if it runs any better, and I'll let you know. I drive it obviously. All right guys, so the carburetor tuning changes I made, the uh, power valve block off plate and secondaries and the smaller power valve and the primaries made a huge difference. It really helped a lot. Um, very excited about it. Rather than the AFR being at like 10.9 under full throttle, it's like 12.2 or something like that, which is a lot better. I'd like it to be a little leaner maybe still. Maybe I can drop a couple jet sizes yet, but it's much, much better. It's noticeably better. It sounds better under full throttle. Um, Really, really glad all that worked out all right. So I really hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you next time on It'll Run. This morning on It'll Run, we are unloading the dishwasher and pulling weeds.